When a healthy infant enters the world, his heart pumps more efficiently than it ever will throughout his lifetime. His arteries are soft and flexible. His blood pressure is low. His blood is thin and flows easily. The effects of time, lifestyle, and the environment have not yet begun to take their toll. Like water flowing in a gentle brook, an infant's blood streams smoothly and with little effort through his arteries with each heartbeat. The arteries expand and easily absorb the contractile force of the heart, which keeps the blood moving forward in a laminar flow. But time is not kind to the arterial system. As the years pass, the child grows taller. His blood pressure must rise to profuse the larger, erect body of an adult. As he eats animal fats and is exposed to environmental stresses, his blood gets thicker. As a result, his heart must work ever harder. Like a steam heating system, the circulatory system is a closed system. The arteries must absorb all of the stress from the laboring heart. A vicious cycle begins. As the heart works harder, arteries in certain regions of the system are overstretched, almost to the point of rupture. The most vulnerable arteries are those located near the heart. Acting as shock absorbers, the proximal aorta and the arteries feeding the heart and brain absorb the impact of ejected blood as it is punched into the arterial system by the now forcefully contracting left ventricle. These arteries begin to be stretched to their limits. Arteries in the lower extremities also become overstretched, but for a different reason. The pull of gravity on the blood in the legs of a person standing upright adds to the already increased pressure in the arterial system. To protect themselves from further stretching and possible rupture, the arteries in these vulnerable regions begin to thicken, stiffen, and harden. In other words, they adapt. As the arteries get tougher, they become less compliant, drastically changing how the blood flows through these regions. To continue to maintain life-sustaining perfusion, blood flow becomes turbulent. Turbulent flow sets the stage for the initiating event that causes atherosclerosis. With turbulent flow, eddies form at the arterial bifurcations, changing direction with each contraction of the heart. The back and forth flow of the blood is abrasive, like sandpaper. The intima of the artery adapts to this assault by forming a callus to protect itself from injury. At the same time, the blood flow dividers at arterial bifurcations are subjected to yet another type of injury. This is high shear stress, which occurs with every heartbeat, only at the peak of systole. These high velocity bursts pound on the intimal surface of the flow divider, wearing it away. The intima adapts to this attack, forming its own type of callus to protect itself. Think of these calluses as the normal physiologic response of the intima to mechanical injury. Nature has programmed the epidermis and other cells in the body to protect themselves from repetitive injury in their own ways. The arterial system is no exception. These calluses eventually develop into what medical science calls early atherosclerotic plaque. Each callus, a bump in the arterial wall, further disturbs the blood flow and creates more turbulence in the non-compliant regions. This sets into motion the end stage of the deadly cycle of atherosclerosis. In a distortion of the original adaptive process, the callus grows as this cycle accelerates. The increasingly turbulent blood flow instigates the buildup of more and more plaque. How fast the plaque grows and what shape it takes depends on the composition of the blood, genetics, lifestyle, and environmental stresses. Most often, the final event is plaque rupture, or dissection, that almost instantly stops all blood flow. A stroke, heart attack, or amputation follows. The chain of events that forced the heart to overwork and to function so inefficiently has again claimed another victim, 
one of the 60 million Americans afflicted with cardiovascular diseases.